Hello and welcome to another Game Nexus Arcade video. In this video I'm going to show you how I ended up hooking up, I don't know if you can see it but it's right over there, the uh, Star Wars Trilogy Arcade Board. Um, this is a Sega Model 3 Step 2.0 or 2.1, kind of just like Spike Out, which is actually what it's sitting on top of, if you can kind of see that, since this board came without a cage. And um, I basically took my knowledge of that and applied it to this, but the problem was is, unlike all those other games that use just a simple joystick with digital movement and um, buttons, this uses an analog joystick and then buttons. And I thought to myself, why go out and find a control panel and uh, make this all crazy when I already have a control panel that has an analog joystick for Planet Harriers and my thought was why can't I repurpose that for this purpose and sure enough after quite a long process of trying to figure it out I figured it out which is why you're seeing this video now well to basically go back to the beginning this board here was sold on eBay as an unknown Sega Model 3 arcade board and like I usually do I just looked at the ROM numbers that are on the board uh, right as I'm saying this I'll probably be showing the original auction pictures which this auction was late in June of 2020 uh, and then I got it like not too long after which is actually rather quick and um, I figured it was Star Wars Trilogy Arcade. I had asked some questions on some of the arcade message boards, but unfortunately, a lot of the stuff I do where I just kind of like MacGyver these boards together, a lot of the people on the forums don't really do, so um, they're like, you need an amp board, you need this, you need that, and I'm thinking, why should I need all this stuff? And then I looked underneath this um, control panel here, and sure enough, Planet Harriers already has an amp board, so I was, I, I was thinking to myself, gee, I wonder if that'd be compatible, because this game came out a few years after Star Wars Trilogy Arcade, which came out in 98, and then Planet Harriers came out in like 2000 or 2001. But it's an analog stick with two triggers, exactly like the one that Star Wars Trilogy Arcade uses, and then I looked at the control panel, I saw there were these big red buttons, which they call the event buttons. So I figured this has four buttons on it, so I could just wire those to some other button if I really want to. And um, yeah, thus the uh, adventure of uh, getting this crazy board to work began. And now the way that I figured this out really is I had the schematics for both Planet Harriers and um, Star Wars Trilogy Arcade on my uh, phone and I kind of just went between them so my first thing was this poorly written paper here um, is all of the controls on the Planet Harriers control panel and what pins and everything they are to and what wires they are to and the way that I figured this out is the whole idea here is to do it without destroying this. This I still want to be able to use for Planet Harriers, and I didn't want to uh, do it in such a way that um, it no longer is useful for that game anymore, because of course I love that game and I want to keep playing it every once in a while, but what I figured out was, you take the wires out here, and you'll notice there are three connections. The way this works, the four pin here is the analog stick. The three pin here are the buttons on the analog stick. And then this um, 12 pin here are all the other buttons and the various lights and everything. So all you gotta do is pull these out. Well that one takes a little bit more force to pull out. And then there you got it. This is your your harness and that's what I basically did here with the mapping is these are all of the things I needed to use and you'll notice on the 12 pin amp here which is that's what I called that I don't know if that's called an amp connector or not anything I circled here 
is something I needed to use and I even actually mapped out the lights so these two VR buttons actually light up when the event left and right buttons would light up for Star Wars Trilogy Arcade now of course that wasn't the end of it then I took another piece of paper and went the other way around on the uh, model model 3 over there on its um, filter board so then here are all the equivalent connections on the filter board so you'll see I figured out all these connections and all their like CNs and everything so like CN1, CN, CN2, CN11 and then I'd had to pull voltage from one connector for all the light of buttons and everything and then there was that then of course I went another step further and these are all the connections well one more here these are the connectors I needed I needed a connector for CN1, a connector for CN2, a connector for CN11, connector for CN3, connector for CN12 and um, what I figured is everything is going to go to the filter board on the Model 3 except I'm going to use the Sega Model 2 control harness because that 12 pin connector can actually be connected to my 12 pin here and therefore that's another piece of harness I can go ahead and reuse because that's all for the digital buttons already so that's basically my needed connectors so I had a basically this big box of uh, extra arcade wiring connectors and I found everything I needed and as much wire as I needed for it and then finally this last paper is my connections to be made as you see here in my poor handwriting I don't think my writing looks good but some people tell me it looks okay but you'll see all of this kit these are all the connections needed to be made first I did the three pin which as I said are the two buttons on the joystick then I did the four pin which is the um, the analog movement so basically up down left right which I believe the way that works is it's like x-axis, y-axis, um, some kind of a voltage thing on there, and then some kind of ground thing on there. And then I did the 12 pin, and of course anything with a line I didn't need to connect. Everything else I needed to connect. Well, that was the short and long of all of this. Now, after all of that, we, we finally get to the point where I made the connectors. The first one here, now these don't look exactly the most elegant in the world, but they're just my own custom connectors. The first one here is, this one goes to your Sega Model 2 harness. Actually, no, 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 other way around. Anything I've marked HRT goes to the control panel. So this is the one that connects for all the buttons then we have this one for the buttons of the joystick and then on the other side I have the one that connects to the Sega Model 2 control panel harness then you'll see various ones that can connect to the filter board of the Model 3 and then I have this other connector here which is as you can see HRT and then I have just two connectors which each have two well actually one has three wires and then one has two one wire so these connect the joystick and now we're gonna I'm gonna basically change the camera position here and go over to the model 3 and show you how everything connects to that uh, hopefully in a rather elegant fashion so it's easier to understand but we're going to unlike my um, spike out video which uh, I kinda had everything connected and I explained after the fact we're gonna kinda do like I did with the model 1 video back in the day and do a step-by-step -step plug everything in and show you how it connects so let's go ahead and go over there and we are going to plug all the wires in so we're going over there right now 
Okay, well now here we are at the arcade board. As I said with this particular one, I did not get the uh, the cage like is on the spike out one that's sitting underneath here. So this is how I actually end up hooking this thing up. Now the first component is this here. This is the Sega ATX, I mean the Sega JBS power supply, which you'll see these guys here, to Model 3. Now this I had actually gotten with my um, Virtual Fighter 3 arcade board and this makes hooking this thing up possible. So we just take our Sega JBS power supply here and connect it to these two big connectors here and that's all you have to do for the power for this board. And the reason why we need to use a JBS power supply is because unlike Sega Model 1 or Sega Model 2, this board needs a uh, plus uh, 3.3 volts, which the power supply for a uh, Sega Model 1 or, or Sega Model 2 only does 12.5 and ground. So you'll see, I believe, let me see here. I believe it's like, yeah, these brown wires here are all your 3.3 volts. And then you just plug this guy into here, which you got to watch out with these connectors that you get pin one as pin one. And then you just plug that one into here, which as I said, these connectors are a little bit difficult to get on here. Hold the board, plug that in. So that goes here, which this one, let me just see if I can get you the actual numbers on this. This one is CN13. So that one goes here. This is just for power. It's not anything to do with the input. And then the one over here, CN14, is the little one here. And now a lot of these pins I actually had to unbend because the one, one thing to keep in mind with any of these connectors is that they are very prone to bending, which I may have to unbend them a little bit here because these connectors kind of just form their own way when you put them on or when you take them off. Sometimes they'll even bend the pins. At least I think it goes that way. Yeah, it goes that way. No, this one actually goes this way. And that's the good thing about these GSTNH connectors. They only snap on one way. So if you can't snap it on, you're putting it the wrong way. Now, if this board actually had a um, fan, which the fans would be like over on the side of the case, like on the uh, board here, uh, this two pin connector plugs here. And then that allows it to um, make the fans go. But for this case, since there's no fan and there's nothing connected here, that's not going to do anything. But I usually just connect it just to get it out of the way. And now the next easiest part to show is the audio section, which is just the big part about this is this guy here. This is the uh, DSB2. Without this board, you cannot have any music. You'll have uh, sound effects like the pew pew and uh, Darth Vader saying he's going to get you, but you're not going to have um, any music at all, any of the classic John Williams music. So I'm just going to put this, I have my desk lamp here, which is illuminating the whole subject here. And uh, this just gets... This is actually the exact same plug I use for Sega Model 2, and I use this on CN8 here. Now I believe the connectors on the Model 3 can actually be used for some surround sound stuff, but um, I only have two speakers that are going to the TV, so there's no point in that. And then the connector from the DSB2 goes on to CN9 which allows it to 
basically it allows the Model 3 board to talk to the DSB2 board and they exchange data back and forth. And you'll see the little lights in the DSB2 blink as well. So that's what's necessary to work this. So that goes on CN9, which it's the other way. As I said, these only snap on one, one way, so that's good. So you won't have any problem with putting them on the wrong way. And now the way I set this up, I have this old uh, camcorder audio mixer. And the way that this works is this old audio mixer has seen better days. Now it has three audio channels on here. And um, audio channel one and two, only one of the channels work. So what I did was I take the audio from the DSB2 and put it into one each of the channels on channel one and two. And that's actually using the connector from Sega Model 1, which is the same as the connector from Sega Model 2 for the audio. It's a four pin that goes into um, stereo, uh, I mean uh, RCA jacks. So one, one of each goes into channels 1 and 2 to give me the stereo music. And then since channel 3's uh, audio works fine, it just goes into... Um, it just goes into channel three for the stereo uh, sound effects. And now, what I gotta do is, last thing is the power, which is just three connections, 12 volt ground and five volts. So what I usually do is just tap into the extra connector in the, mo in the uh, power supply here and just plug them into their appropriate connections. And since this is all Sega wiring, you just match, I, I actually just put alligator clips on these and you just match white, uh, yellow, and red in order to power the DSB2, which, like any board on an arcade setup, if you don't power it, you're not gonna get power to it. White is ground, uh, plus five is um, yellow, and plus 12 is red, which if you're used to PC stuff, the plus 5 and the plus 12 is usually a switch compared to what Sega does. But yeah, that's Sega wiring for you. But yeah, that's all you have to do for that. And then of course the last thing is the video here. Just a VGA connection, which goes off the, to, to the... Um, the GBS 8200, which then connects to the um, the um, VGA to HDMI, and then that goes into the TV. And one last thing here is, in the actual audio mixer, the output then goes into that um, VGA to HDMI, and that's all there is for audio, video, and power. And in the next segment here, we're going to do the um, controls. Okay, we're almost there. I just wanted to show you this really quick so nobody asks this, but we're going to connect the, the uh, control panel hookups. So, all we got to do is take my custom connectors here and... Uh, easiest way is just to separate them because as I had mentioned earlier this one here which just does the analog stick is its own connection and then the uh, one for the buttons and the analog stick buttons is another one so I just take this one here which has HRT on it as I marked it so I knew where it connects plug it into here then take the other one which has two connections mm -hmm. so we're going to take the two connections that go from the Planet Harrier's control panel into the harness here and just connect those up right now so just like this and the good thing is I set these up so the connectors all go right side up and there's no confusion and that's all there is to that part. Now that's all connected to the Planet Harrier's control panel. Now we're going to go back over to the Model 3 and take care of the rest of the wiring. Okay, now let's get to the rest of the connecting of this uh, crazy setup of mine here. 
The first thing we need here is this. You might see, remember this from another video that I had. This is the Sega Model 2 connector for the controls. And the reason why I'm using this is because all of the digital buttons will actually go through this. And it just made my life a lot easier. So we're taking this guy here and we're just going to connect it to CN2, which is right here. And this just goes like this. And that just, like all the connectors, just snaps right on. And now, the only other thing that needs to be done with this, since uh, like a lot of my harnesses, I kind of chopped it up a bit, is um, I have a grounding pin for the, uh, you'll see here, th these are the um, test switch and service button. And then I have this wire that came out of here, which is actually a rather elegant solution for whoever did it when I got my Virtual Fighter 2 board. And this just pins to a grounding pin somewhere, so these work. That's all I gotta do there. But the good thing is the power supply I actually keep off to the side. There's enough wire to bring it over there. And when I actually made these uh, custom harnesses, I did some quality of life improvements on this particular harness. You'll see I got these zip ties that are all nice and they're making the wires look a bit better. So now, the first big connection we got here is for uh, all your digital buttons. And now, if I take my harness here, I just want to keep these wires from getting all crazy uh, knotted up, because you've got to realize, it's kind of a lot of wiring to do a whole arcade game here, but the big one is the connector here, which I'm getting unknotted off camera. You probably can't see what I'm doing right now, but this is my, as you can see the marking, CN2 connector. All I got to do is plug it into the Model 2 connector where normally the uh, the connection that looks like this guy would plug and then all my alligator clips would be in and then I could play like a game with regular buttons but I just connect it to this like that and that's all there is to that and now we got regular buttons and now all I have to do for the rest of the connectors is connect them all to their matching connectors so what I'm going to do first before I do the uh, ones for the analog stick since there's two of those since it's like three go on one connector and two go on another but what we have here is we have CN12 then we have CN3 and then we have well that's all for this one so CN3 is over here this one I know is completely lined up the way I did it. Let me just take a look at the connections. I set all these connectors up so pin one goes to pin one so that just makes my life a lot easier. There's only one connection which doesn't do that because it's only one pin but there's CN3. CN12 is... I just gotta find where CN12 is now. Yeah CN12 is this tricky one over here. Yeah, some of these are rather tricky to get, and they're kind of hard to uh, do with the angle I'm looking at them right now. Because as I said, it's basically a, a line of pins that you have to plug a connector into. And the way that I did this, since this connector doesn't quite uh, do the whole thing, is I chopped off the connector so it can actually go between pins and it doesn't uh, bend any of them. There we go. Now that's on. Well, no, that didn't, that kind of slid above. That's why I told you these uh, GST and H connectors are a bit tricky. Especially on this one where we have the power connector literally sitting right next to this. It just makes it a little, little trickier to put on. There it is. Now, we just have two more. We have the two for the um, 
joystick, which are right here. This is CN11 and CN1. Now CN1 is just right next to CN2, so that's easy. That just goes right here. And now CN11 is right next to CN12, but the thing about this is it's only one pin, as you can see, which it's actually pin number six. And the way that this is wired is it's wired up to the fourth pin of this connector. So I just have to count two pins and then plug this in. So one, two on this and then plug it in and then it'll plug into pin six. And I know that sounded really complicated, but uh, that's basically how you do it. Um, it took me a good like two days to figure out all these connections and uh, now if I turn it on, I'll bring the camera back over to the other side. Um, the Planet Harriers control panel will run um, this Sega Model 3 board and play it just like it were the uh, real thing. So I'm going to bring the camera back over there and uh, show you that it works. So let's go ahead and get that done right now. Oh, okay, and as you can see, we have everything all hooked up here. You can't see it too well because I took the desk lamp out because I got to kind of plug all these plugs in. And let me just show you the uh, screen here. I'm going to have to bring the tripod up a bit. Now, if you can see this, here's our input test. So when I press the two... Um, the two VR buttons, you'll get our event buttons going. Now when I press the buttons on the joystick, you'll see Fire Zero is the one on the top, Fire One's the one on the front, and then you'll see if you look at our XY, our joystick moves. And now one weird thing that I have to make mention of here, um, this probably won't matter to anybody as I doubt anyone's going to do something as crazy as I did with this setup here, but um, when I first hooked this up, uh, when I was using the, um, the joystick here, back to our joystick here, let's unzoom a little bit, there we go, when I was using the joystick here, this, both axes here were reversed. And I always think to myself, oh, don't tell me this is not going to work. There's no way that I can possibly do this. But then I searched online, um, uh, joystick inverted Star Wars arcade, uh, Star Wars Trilogy Arcade. And sure enough, there was somebody else who had a similar problem, but it was actually the reverse of what I had. So uh, he actually had a cabinet and... He's like, oh, well, my girlfriend tried to play it, and it didn't work because everything was reversed. And um, so what they had to do was turn it from deluxe to standard. Now, what's funny here is, on my system here, it was actually set to standard. And when I turned it to deluxe, the joystick uninverted. Because the problem is, is in the test mode here, you can set... Um, you can set um, the up and down to invert because, you know, some people like the good old flight control yoke thing and um, have it all backwards. But you can't invert the, the x-axis. So you can't make it so that, so that um, the left and right is inverted. But what I'm going to show you here is one more thing here. I don't know what, I, I guess there's a light that's supposed to be on the panel, but I just want to show you this really quick, that, uh, that the uh, actual VR buttons will light up when the output test here is going between event 0, event 1, and I don't know what panel is, so maybe there's another light that lights up on the uh, Star Wars Trilogy Arcade panel, but yeah. The event lights light up and everything just like they should, and everything is fully functional. You just have to calibrate the joystick, which is something somebody's told me to do on Planet Harriers anyway before I do it, but that's the general gist of how I hook this whole crazy contraption up 
to work with uh, Star Wars Trilogy Arcade. So my next video will be um, hopefully some decent gameplay of this whole thing. But um, this has been another Game Nexus Arcade video, and I shall see you next time. Bye.